Well, very good afternoon, folks. Welcome back. If you have been joining us throughout the day today for Options Forum 2023, uh, if this is your first session, then welcome. Either way, I uh, appreciate you being with us here. It's 3.45 Eastern, and uh, this is a quick session. It's a 30-minute session. We just completed a demo on uh, trading option spreads on Power E-Trade, and now I'll be sharing a little bit with you on how to accomplish the same thing on Power E-Trade Mobile. Uh, I'm Rick Swope. I'll be your host here for this uh, session. And uh, we have uh, the rest of the team on with us here. And uh, you have the opportunity to ask questions, send in your feedback. So thank you for uh, participating in that. As we get started, of course, uh, as always, just want to let you know that everything that we talk about is for educational purposes only. And nothing should be construed as a buy or sell recommendation, especially given the fact that we are coming up here to the last 20 minutes of the market. And so you're going to see some live data come across here. Uh, and so uh, that's, uh, that's for illustration only. Now what you're going to see here, I'm sharing, and it should show up in your media player. I have already logged in to the Power E-Trade mobile platform. Uh, it, it, these are the, the, the mobile platforms, uh, E-Trade Mobile or Power E-Trade Mobile are available at the uh, are in the app store, so you can uh, you can download those. Those are very easy to get to, uh, and login is going to be the same login that you would use for any of your other platforms, including the web. So uh, it's pretty seamless as far as that goes. And you should be uh, seeing on my screen right now. And I'm going to actually stop for just a moment and ask Sean just to make sure, since we're live and running, that that is showing up in media player and not just on my end. Sean, can you give me that thumbs up yeah. on that? Yeah, perfect. Looking right. good on my end, and uh, sound sound is good as well. Keep going. All right, thank you. So we are at the dashboard. If you look down at the bottom left, you'll see that there are some universal menu items: dashboard, portfolio, quote, trade, and so forth. And if I want to, uh, if I want to navigate around, I'm going to show you a couple of bits of the functionality here. So let's say that. Let's say that I'm looking at, um, oh, I don't know, see, T euro price. I guess we could just pick this one up. This is one that had been, uh, that we'd been looking at for stocks on the move. Um, uh, if you're not familiar, we do a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday webcast every, every week at 11 o'clock Eastern for 30 minutes. And on Tuesdays, we do one called stocks on the move. And we just, happen to have this one pop up over um, over this week and so no no other reason than that that's the only reason I'm talking about that so if i look at the chart um, you know i can i can make my assessment on whether or not i think this is a good candidate for an option spread trade or any other kind of trade one of the ways that i'm going to do that is by looking at the chart and you see right there at the top is i clicked on chart notice across the top that it says detail, chart, options, news, and then I can scroll over a little bit and I can talk, I can look at market depth. So anytime on a mobile platform, you understand that the real estate's a little bit limited. Anytime that uh, I don't see something entirely, there's a good chance that all I have to do is just grab it and scroll over, and that's the case here. Um, if I had time, I might, uh, I might point out a couple of things as far as chart goes. One thing that I do want to show you, because this is kind of universal, is uh, on the right-hand side, you'll see a gear. Uh, and that gear is your setup. So if I click on that gear, um, this is where I would make my adjustments, um, and not just on the chart, but you'll see in a moment on the options as well. And so here's I can add technical studies, I could change the chart type and so forth. Um, but what I want to click on is options. You see detail, chart, and options across the top. So I'm going to click here on options, and now this is where we're going to park ourselves for a few minutes as we, as, uh, as we get going on this. Um, what I'm looking at here is an option chain. And a few things that I want to point out here, and that is, as I've got it set up right now, you see across the top, uh, I have my strike prices, excuse me, my expirations rather, and it tells me very conveniently here how many days I have until each of the expirations. 
So I don't have to calculate, okay, if I, if I want to go out to the, say, October expiration for October 23, as I'm scrolling across, it tells me, you see, it's kind of a, a, a pop-up and then it disappears. But as I'm scrolling, it tells me that it's 135 days. So it's, it's, uh, it's a nice way to, uh, to, to know how far out I want to go on expiration. And as I, as I select it, you can see if I were to go to the July 7, for example, um, it highlights it so I know which one I'm looking at. And the fact is I can highlight more than one. I've got both the June and the July highlighted on here. So if I, if I ever want to do uh, any kind of a, a, a diagonal uh, spread, uh, I can have on the same screen multiple expirations. Then as I look at this, notice that just below the expirations here, I have calls and puts. And if I wanted one or the other, instead of looking at both of them, let's say I just wanted calls, I could tap on calls and it will expand my column view for the calls and get rid of the puts. There are times that maybe I just, I'm only interested in doing a vertical spread, maybe a vertical call spread, and I don't need to look at the puts. I don't need that real estate taken up. Well, that, that's how I do that. If I click on calls again, you'll notice that puts comes back into view. Now, if, I, if, I, uh, if I'm looking at calls and puts, like I said, my number of columns is really quite limited in what I can display on a mobile view. So what, how can I look at something besides, let's say I, I will always have the bid and ask up. But let's say I wanted to look at Delta, and I've already added Delta to my column view, but I don't see it up there. How do I, how do I look at Delta? Well, what I do is I take that last column on the end, and I click on it. So you notice that right now it says open interest. If I click on that column, I just touch that column, it then will give me the choice of the, uh, of the columns that I've selected that I may want to look at, and I can then change it to whatever I want. So I may change that to Delta, and I'll say done. And now you'll notice that on the option chain, in addition to bid and ask, which is always visible, I now look at Delta. If I want to look at something else, maybe intrinsic value, I click on Delta, and then I come out here. I think I've got intrinsic value. Nope, I didn't have intrinsic value. Well, maybe I want to do, uh, maybe I want to do, I'll just pick one of these. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's say that I do want to look at intrinsic value. How would I add it on here? Here's how we do it. I just mentioned a moment ago about the gear, right? Right there in the middle between the calls and puts is a gear. If I click on that, the third selection down is column selection. I can click on that, and then I can go down here and say, ah, there it is. Okay, hidden columns, I can select intrinsic value right there in the middle. So I go in and I tap on that, and that now brings intrinsic value up to my visible columns. All right, these are just, just so, so you're not having to choose from everything, things that you may not be interested in. Once I've uh, made intrinsic value a visible column, then I click off of this, close it again, and now when I click on Delta, or whichever one's visible, then I come down here and sure enough, there is my intrinsic value. I click on that, I say done, and in addition to the bid and ask, I now have intrinsic value shown. So. It's a little bit different than the full Power E-Trade platform. Well, it's a lot different than the full Power E-Trade platform. But the fact is, when you've got a, a uh, when you've got a full screen, maybe you're running on a desktop or a laptop, you've got a lot of you got a lot of screen space to work with. On a mobile platform, you just have to understand how that screen space is optimized. Okay, so let's say that I want to go out to let's say that I want a um, uh, let's see. Let's go out to the July 23, and I'm going to get rid of everything else. So we're going to go out 44 days. All right, so I'm going to click off, and now I see that uh, the only thing that I've got is July 23, which is 44 days. Now, 
I, you were seeing just a moment ago how uh, Steve and Dave were showing how you can execute or set up various spreads via the option chain. And you can do the same thing on the mobile platform. So uh, you'll notice that my intrinsic value is, uh, is shaded in purple. I think you can discern that on the shared screen. And then anything that's out the money, uh, so my in the money is shaded purple, my out the money is left white. And let's, let's just for the sake of uh, keeping the screen a little bit easier on the eyes, let's focus on calls. So we're gonna go ahead and put, uh, set the puts off to the side so we can look at a little bit more on calls. And I'm, I still have the July 23 at 44 days left. And uh, let's say that I want to do a bull call spread. So I'm going to buy an in the money and sell an out the money. Now, I'm not really concerned about, uh, you know, about making sure that I've got a, quote, proper uh, strategy for the stock here. It's just real, this is really showing functionality. So if I wanted to say buy the 105 and sell the 115, here's how I could do it. I could click the ask on the 105 strike. It's the third line down there as we're looking at it. And that now highlights green. It's telling me that I want to buy that at $9.30 as it's currently trading. And if I go $10 up so that I'm, uh, I'm at 115, which is just out the money here by a couple dollars, then I can sell at the bid. And when I do that, notice now that it tells me what my selected options are. And it maintains those on the screen so that it's very clear which one is the buy, which one is the sell, what strike price. Now, down at the bottom, the fourth menu tab over, notice that as soon as I clicked on those, the trade icon at the bottom has a little uh, purple, whatever color you want to uh, circle on it now. It's a little icon that's attached itself to the trade menu choice to tell me that on my trade ticket, I now have two legs in there. So let's click on the trade ticket and let's see what we have in that. So I'm going to click on that and notice that it recognizes what I've done. It says I've got a vertical call spread or a call vertical up here at the top. Um, it's telling me right below that, and it's marked red and green on the, on the far left side, just little bars if you, if you see those. The green is my long hey, leg. Yes, Sean. Two, two, two minutes to trade. <laughs> That's all right. I, I probably won't go full execute on this. Okay. Uh, I wanted to be sure you knew. Two minutes if you thank, wanted to but, if you but, wanted to show it live. All right. But thank you. <laughs> yeah, I think there's so much to explain here that I think walking it through. But you, yes, thank you for the heads up on that. Um, so we've got the we've got the green is the buy. That's the long leg of the vertical. Red is the cell, that's the short leg of the vertical. And then on that line item, it tells me exactly what I've got. I'm buying one July 23, 105 call. It's got a bid of 870, an ask of 910, so it's got a 40 cent spread. The short leg telling me what I'm selling, and it's got a, now it's got a 20 cent spread. Now, let me, let's take a look at a couple ways that we could, we could adjust this if we wanted to. Let's say that I wanted to, in, in my default here is just one contract. Let's say I wanted to do five contracts. Well, down here on quantity, real easy way to change your quantity is just with the plus or minus button. You see that? So I can adjust just by hitting the plus or minus button on my quantity. I can change uh, how many contracts I'm doing. Below that, I can adjust my pricing. Now, I could do this at the midpoint. Now, this is, by the way, this is a call, uh, a, a bull call spread, the way I've set it up as the call vertical, which means that it's going to be a net debit. Uh, it's going to cost me money to do this trade. Now, I could choose, I could do this on the bid, and notice that it changes the debit to six. I could do it on the mid, which is between the two. Uh, just by touching on the scale here, I can change the price. 
or I can adjust to my own price by clicking the minus button next to that debit line or the plus button. You see the changes that are being made as I'm clicking plus or minus. Finally, I could go in here if I want to, and I can uh, actually type in a number rather than doing the, so, you know, let's say I wanted to do 650. I just type in 650. So notice that what I'm doing here is I'm adjusting the structure of the trade with these very quick and easy shortcuts. Um, I can also go in here and change the time or the duration by, uh, it will set it up as a day order, but I could also set it up as uh, with the various types, good to cancel, good to date, or so forth. Typically, uh, we're not doing those kinds of limits um, more than a day order, uh, just because of the, oftentimes the spread, you'll want to be looking at um, you want to be looking at managing it a little bit more hands-on. Now, once I have this set up the way I want it, I can scroll down a little bit further, and let's look at a couple other things that we're looking at here. Um, for one thing, uh, it tells me precisely when my earnings and dividends are in case I need to pay attention to that for the trade. I'm going to, uh, I'm, this expiration is July 21st of 23, and that's before earnings, which next earnings is July 27th. However, um, I have an ex-dividend date coming up here in another week, so that may factor into my decision. But the point here is, uh, regardless of what type of strategy, whether it's a spread strategy, a even a, a you know more than just a double leg strategy, or even if it's just a simple single leg strategy, you want to be aware particularly of dividends and earnings dates. And so we put that right there, and make it very easy for you to find that. Now, what I really like about this is uh, Power E Trade Mobile has snapshot analysis, just like the Power E Trade platform. So if you're used to using snapshot analysis. In the Power E Trade platform, we give you the capability as well on the mobile platform. And if, if you're familiar with that, you basically have your probability analysis, your break even points, and so forth, your risk reward profile. And uh, I always like to mention that these are based on uh, theoretical uh, volatility numbers. And so, you know, you still want to, you still want to take a look at the charts. I'm still a big fan of looking at charts. In fact, our next session, which is going to start in about uh, 27 minutes now, as I'm looking at my clock, uh, is how to uh, use charts to help you select your strike prices. Uh, so uh, if you were inclined to perhaps uh, bail out of options forum a little bit early, um, I'm going to tease you and say stick around for the last 4.30 to 5.30 session. And then, of course, your P&L diagram, which uh, I can just touch on this and scroll back and forth. And then if I preview this, then, yep, that's what I thought. This is going to – This is a, and plus, I'm at, after the market anyways. That's fine. But your preview is going to be just your final sanity check to make sure that that trade is set up the way you want that trade to be set up. Um, and then you can, you can send that trade in at that point, or the save button is for if you want to construct a trade so that later on in a time more appropriate as you d determine, rather than having to create it from scratch, you've got a trade that's ready to go and you could just pull it up and move it along there. Now, if I have this trade set up and I want to change something, I can come back here and let's say that I want to sell the 120 instead of the 115. Quick and easy uh, change here. I just click on the, 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 sell, the leg that I had been selling, which was the 115, and I move up and click on the 120 leg. And so it, it's really a toggle on and off. I'll show it to you again. I'm on the, you notice that I've got a 105 by 120 uh, spread here. I, it, I can just click on the 120, it turns it off. I click on the 115, it turns it on. Uh, if I want the 120, I don't want both of them. I turn off the 115, I get the 120, and I can turn off the 105 and put on the 110. All right? 
the point here is you can add or remove legs. It really is like a toggle switch. I can add or remove legs any way that I want by clicking the bid and the ask. In fact, I can, uh, you know, we're talking about uh, the easy thing here is to do a two-legged spread. But I could go all the way up to an iron condor uh, where I, or, or more if I wanted to do more legs. But an iron condor is a four-legged spread. I can do that just by clicking on the various bids and asks. Now, uh, obviously, as you're familiar with that, I'd have to pull back into the looking at the puts as well for that. Or I'm going to show you one other thing. Let's turn all this off completely. So we're starting from scratch. Notice now down at the bottom, my trade button no longer has that little indicator that has a number. That's why, because I've toggled them all off. So if I were to hit the trade button now, I don't have anything. Now, at the top here, it defaults to stock or ETF, but it's also a pull down. So if I click up here at the top where it says stock or ETF, that gives me a pull down menu, and now I've got all kinds of choices. Look at this. Now, it recognized that I had a call vertical because of the way I structured it. But if I know my strategy and then I want to go in and maybe make adjustments to expiration or adjustments to strike or limit debits, limit credits, whatever the case may be, I can choose the strategy. So for example, let's go to Iron Condor. We know that's a four-legged strategy. I go to Iron Condor and notice now that it sets up uh, four legs. And it, it, now I can go in and with these pull downs, I can tell it, okay, what do I want to do? Uh, do I want to do a, you know, what expiration? My expiration scrolls. What strike price? My strike price scrolls. Do I want to do a call or a put? Uh, that scrolls. Now, it, you know, it's going to, it recognizes with an iron condor that I've got to buy and sell. Uh, I've got to buy a call, sell a call, buy a put, sell a put. So it sets it up there already for me. But I can make the change based on this template. And that's really what I would call that, is I would call it a template. Uh, if at any point I wanted to do, say, let's, let's get rid of this. Let's go back to the trade. Um, let's, let's do a, a, a different kind of trade. Let's delete all this out of here. I'm just going to delete this and start from scratch again. And maybe I want to do, uh, let's, say, let's say that I do a, go back to call vertical. Um, and maybe I want to change it into a ratio spread where I've got an, a, an offset number of long versus short. It will allow me to do that. I can change the quantity on individual legs if I so desire. Now, the moment I do that, the moment I change it uh, from equal quantities, it will recognize, oops, you know what, you're no longer in a call vertical. You're gonna, we're, they're gonna call it, it's gonna call it a custom spread. Anything that is not immediately recognized as the standard spread template will show up as a custom spread. Uh, so it doesn't mean that you can't do something other than what's on the uh, pull down list. It just means that at the moment that you construct it that way, it'll recognize it as a custom spread, and then you can go on at that point and decide how you want to uh, how you want to create it. Um, all right, you know we, we're we're down to just actually the last couple minutes. I don't know, uh, guys, if, if there are any questions. I haven't been following it, but if there's anything, or or maybe guys, something that you like using. Uh, on the platform that you think I should point out before we call it a, a break on this session. You're welcome to join me on here, and uh, we're going to have a conversation, or you can just give me a minute to have a sip of my coffee. Well, take a sip of your coffee. I'll see if Dave has um, any questions on this. So a question came in early on. As different platforms have perfected, um, and they're still growing, by the way, which is which is now the most used? Um, Rick, it's eTrade.com. And <laughs> it is. I don't know about you, but that 
frustrates me because um, <laughs> eTrade.com can do a lot of things, but I don't think it does anything particularly well, especially as an options person. So when I when I see that people are placing their trades, their initial trades on eTrade.com, I'm thinking it's kind of a painful experience. Uh, but Power eTrade, and it, it sounds like I'm selling you on it. There's no cost to it at all. And, and same thing with the mobile platform. There's no cost. I just think it's a far better user experience. And I'm an options guy. And Rick, you're a chart guy. So we yeah. show eTrade.com because we know people are sort of safe in that environment, or they feel safer. But not for me. You know, it's, it's Power eTrade is where I'm most comfortable. And I'll use Power yeah. eTrade on my. On my um, iPad Pro, it works great there, or or one of my laptops. So, well, you know, it's it's, it's I think it's a matter of familiarity. Uh, people generally start with eTrade.com, and there's a lot of obviously a a lot of great functionality there, and they get used to it, and um, and and you know, you're 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 comfortable there. But what we find is when people do venture out um, and try a mobile platform or try Power eTrade. Um, and that familiarity increases to a level that they had on E-Trade, then it's a much easier uh, task to f flow back and forth between platforms. I do that all the time. I, I uh, you know, the Power E-Trade is my prefer preferable trading platform, uh, but I do a lot of other things on E-Trade.com. Uh, I, do, I do a lot of screening. I do a lot of uh, research. Yeah. Uh, I like looking at, uh, you know, if I'm looking at ETFs, I like doing my ETF. Uh, uh, profiles on there, look at the prospectus and so forth. So, yeah, you know, well, I mean, the they're all platforms, but I, and I think it's just a matter of familiarity. So, if uh, let me encourage you, if you're getting frustrated because it, maybe you, you're just not seeing how to do something, uh, it's probably there, and you just need to be patient and work it into your skill set. So, yeah. And good, Rick, good. I'll, I'll throw another one out there too. And so, yeah, you, you made a good point about the things that we that eTrade.com does really well. And one of them is the ability to look at all the different research reports and the screen stocks and ETFs. So that's pretty much where I'm going to start my um, uh, my research. And you'll see that when we do options playbooks on Wednesdays, that very often it originates on eTrade.com. But the other thing too is, let's face it, all brokerages will have problems sometimes. And sometimes that problem is specific to either the .com or their software-based or their web-based. So there have been times when I had gone to, you know, to one area, hey, for some reason I'm not able to log on, and then I've switched to another platform and I've gotten on and been able to get my trade in or get my quota, whatever it is. So I think it's great that we have the redundancy. So I encourage yeah, yeah. everyone – be sure you're at least comfortable with going in and creating a trade or closing a trade or getting your quote or your account balance or, or did that check clear or whatever it is. So the redundancy, I think, is, uh, is really nice. And that comes from a person that there was only one way to do a trade uh, you know, back in the 90s, and that was over the telephone. And right. that environment when we'd have some kind of an issue was, you know, you'd have incredible hold times. Then dot-com came along. So anyway, redundancy is a good thing. Yeah, no, no, that's good. Um, and, you know, let me remind folks as well, uh, everybody that's on the call, if you are not joining us on our Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday webcasts, which are 11 o'clock Eastern time every single week, Monday we do charting markets. We take a look at the broad markets to see what's on the horizon for the upcoming week. And this is real-time analysis, by the way. Tuesday we do stocks on the move where we look at how to find stocks in individual areas that might be moving. And then Wednesdays is options playbook where we come in and we look at actual scenarios and how to manage trades. All three of those sessions are done primarily on Power E-Trade. So if you are an eTrade.com person and you just wish you had the ability to get a little bit more exposure to Power E-Trade, then those are fantastic opportunities for you. So take advantage of that. eTrade.com slash events is how you sign up for that. Uh, folks, we are at the quarter past the hour at 4.30 in just 15 minutes. I'll be coming back for our final session of the day, which is identifying strike prices based on charts. Thank you for joining us here on this one. As always, please, please, please fill out the survey and give us your comments because that is very important information for us. Uh, for now, Thank you for joining us, and I hope to see you in 15 minutes for our final session of Options Forum 2023. Bye-bye now.